Hey everyone, once bit here with another battle report. So I uh, tooled up my beastman list just a little bit, making uh, what I felt was still a very friendly list, but but a little more competitive than the one I used for the last three games. And um, just on a regular game night at the store, I met up with a Wood Elf player. Um, this guy's a, he's a really good player. I've played him actually a couple years ago when he played Dark Elves back in seventh edition. But he has a Wood Elf army and um, and I haven't played against that, I mean, hardly at all. So I was very, uh, very excited for this game. Uh, calling it friendly, but not ridiculous. So starting on the far left, he's got an eagle, a unit of Glade Guard. And I want you to look closely at the Glade Guard. He actually took <laughs> took the time and effort to string their bows. And uh, actually looks uh, looks very, very cool. Got a unit of Dryads be, uh, kind of behind him. Then there's a big gap in the middle of the table. And then he bunkered in the corner with another unit of Glade Guard. Two units of dryads. In the frontmost unit, there is a, a branch wraith with them, and he's got a treekin, an eagle, small unit of glade guard behind him, and then in the corner, two units of six treekin, and tw then in a unit behind him with glade guard, with this level four spellweaver lore of life. So one thing that is noticeably absent from the list is a battle standard bearer. So he has, I believe, at least leadership nine. It might even be ten. Um, I don't know if he has a standard of discipline or not, but anyway, he's got decently high leadership, uh, but no reroll, and he's in the corner. So you know, to me, that would be just really risky because any mistakes at all, and the unit might run off the table. So there's just a close up. He just, I think he did a really good job of painting these. Just a real, I just really like playing games like this. So I have got first off, I have one unit of gore in reserve, and then I've got a gorgon, harpies, uh, senegor. Uh, and they've got the um, Hangover from Hell special rule this game. You roll it the first of the game, so their movement's less one, but they can always re-roll Primal Fury. I've got a Razor Gore proxied by Dragon Ogre. Unit of Gore with my level 2 Lore of Beasts Dispel Scroll. Uh, then I have my Best of Gore unit, and it's, it's kind of hard to see what they have, but basically they have the Standard of Discipline, my General, and my Battle Standard Bearer, and they are the two models in the front right of the unit. The BSB has the 202 build, so he's got a 2-up armor save with a with the uh, plus one strength banner, and I forget how my little my, how my general was kitted out. He's kitted out for combat, and you'll see in a little bit why it just doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so the BSB was supposed to go with a horde of gore on the left, and then when I was deploying, I just forgot, and I was thinking more about getting him central to get the reroll around, and I wasn't really thinking about getting the plus one strength on the horde. So I've got some strength seven best of gores. <laughs> Nothing to sneeze at. And here on the left, uh, I've got a Razor Gore, two Chariots, and some more, some Harpies. So what Elves go first? He moves, as you can see, he doesn't really move up aggressively. Um, a lot of stuff he keeps back is Treekin. He does move up. I never appreciated how tough Treekin are. Treekin are. I've never played against them. These things are tough. They're 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 good. They're expensive though. So uh, here on the left, you notice he he flew both of his Eagles up to where it will not be difficult to charge him with my Harpies. So he uh, obviously just doesn't fear the harpies, and I like that because I've had good success with harpies against eagles. So we go to beastman turn one. I move up pretty much as fast as I can, especially there in the middle. Uh, both units of harpies charge the eagles. Uh, here on the right, uh, the gorgon is not a wonderful matchup against the treekin, especially not one on one. Uh, so I, I I might have even moved him back a little bit. I just really can't afford to get him in there solo. Uh, my unit in ambush came on, and I rolled a 1, so my opponent got to choose where they deployed, so it was against my table edge, so I brought him in behind the the Senegor. And I really, I don't mind him being behind the Senegor, it's just that um, I don't really like where everything is. The Senegor too far back, so I kind of let myself get congested in the middle just a little bit. Now, the Gore unit kind of on the left has my Spellcaster, and he does have Transformation of Kadan, and I think that'd be a very nice counter to the uh, to the Treekin. <laughs> So overall, it looks like this. Looks like that. Close-up action shot. That's before combat. Before combat. And that might as well be after combat. We just had a big pillow fight. And um, I may have done one wound to him. Maybe not. But we just stuck there in the middle. Close-up of the ambushers coming on. And during the magic phase, uh, I go ahead and get the lower level spell off. I think I did a Black Hydra. And I did it because there was really nothing, no other spell I, I had that was going to do much, much good. And so this way I figured either he had to um, dispel it in his magic phase and eat some of his dice, 
or uh, take the risk that I can I can make a terror causing charge I can um, you know do other things so there's there's the after combat yeah big pillow fight uh, here on the left not so much my harpies kill his eagle um, I think before he even had a t chance to attack because we beat him by one initiative so they just reform and we go to Wood Elves turn two. So I was really surprised as Treekin, instead of uh, marching up, he just kind of actually backed up a little bit. So he's got some real real muscle guarding that flank. And then he's got his, his uh, Treeman on the upper left with the Dryads guarding the other flank. And so it's a pretty smart move. He has these tough things protecting him, and he's going to sit back and shoot at me and, and cast Dwellers below. So overall it looks like that. Uh, he caught Dwellers Below off for the first time this game. Um, it's only turn two, but the first time he was in range, he got it. It doesn't look like he did much to the unit, but that's only because that monster is taking up so much room. He actually cut the unit in half. Uh, shooting whittles down the Bestigore just a little bit. Shooting puts a wound on one of the chariots. And in combat, I did a wound to him, he did a wound to me, and it's a push. So we go to Beastman turn two. Uh, so first off, I fly. I made a mistake. I thought this thing could fly because my model has wings, and so I charged the Treekin saying he could fly, and then like five minutes later we realized he was a Black Hydra and does not have wings, and so we measured it and rolled the dice again because we forgot what I had rolled the first time. And he needed a lot, and he made it anyway. It's kind of funny. So the Black Hydra's in combat with the unit of Treekin. Uh, I was trying to be all clever here on the left with my Razor Gore and my Center Gore, setting up some... Um, you know, his Treekins, if, if he wanted to charge with them. Uh, let's see. Oh, on the left-hand side, I needed a 10 from each of my chariots to reach the Dryads, and with, got it with both of them. Now, it's with Swift Stride, so getting a 10 with Swift Stride isn't unreasonable, but getting it with both was really, really nice. And uh, I think it surprised both of us. Otherwise, just some action shots from the middle of the table. Here's some more at the middle of the table. Really feels like, you know, he's he's hunkered down in that corner, and I just don't know if I can get to him in time before he just dwellers and shoots me to death. So here on the left, we um, easily beat the Dryads. I was hoping it would panic the, the Glade Guard, but that wasn't to be. One Chariot uh, f uh, chased him down. I don't know if I failed my, my uh, Restrain Test or not. Uh, the, uh, the other one reformed to face the great Glade Guard. Uh, here on the right. So during the magic phase, he dispelled the Black Hydra, which means that now he had very, very few uh, dispel dice left. I still had all my power dice, so I cast the beefed up version of Transformation of Kadan, turned into a, uh, a Mountain Chimera, and did nine wounds against the Treekin. Uh, they were steadfast, but they nevertheless broke in combat, fled right through the General's unit, which caused them to panic, and they didn't run away. He's lucky they kind of ran straight back, because if they had ran at any kind of angle, they'd have been off the table. Um, I felt that was very good news. It means on his turn, they'll probably rally both of them, but the Glade Guard won't be able to shoot, and the Treekin are now kind of behind his lines. And I was mistaken when I said I did nine wounds. I did six wounds to him. He still has four of them left, and so that they're still very formidable, but it's kind of awkward because it's behind his lines. Uh, here in the middle, we're still duking it out. I think we did a wound apiece again. So uh, I'm, I think he's sitting on one wound left, but I'm sitting on only three harpies, so we're both a little bit nervous there. Uh, we go to Wood Elves turn three. Uh, there's an overall look at the board. Uh, here on the left, his, his archers just kind of move up out of line of sight of my chariot, and they're going to shoot at my harpies. Uh, here on the right, he charged my race. Remember I had this all set up, and then I realized I kind of goofed, and so he could he could wheel around the Razor Gore, so he charged this, the Senegore first, so I just fled with him. And then he redirected into the Razor Gore, and I just fled with him. And in hindsight, I think that was a mistake, because now he's just sitting back there, you know, I risked failing a panic test, and it really didn't win me anything. So didn't I don't like the way I'm playing in this lower right-hand corner. Uh, let's see, over here, yeah, that's uh, everybody rallied in the corner, which didn't surprise me. Uh, during the shooting phase, his big unit of Glade Guard could not shoot. Um, the unit of Glade Guard on the left could. I was skeptical they could really see me. Uh, even if they could, maybe only three. But whatever, they uh, uh, they could see me and they shot and they did. 
he, I, I'm sitting on three wounds. I think he had one wound from combat, and now there's two wounds. So now all he has to do is dispel, dispel this, and my mage will die. And there's really no reason to do it on his spell, on his turn. He can just cast spells, wait till my next turn, and dispel it on my magic phase, and I'm down a spellcaster. My only spellcaster. So here in the far left, he shoots my harpies and kills all of them. I thought was pretty good shooting. Uh, the <laughs> glade guard in the middle shoot my razor gore. That always happens to my razor gores. Uh, here in the combat, my my uh, harpies take off the final wound off of the eagle, which I appreciated. And we move to beastman turn three. So uh, if you start in the far right, the uh, gorgon and my gore charged his treekin, and the gore failed their charge. The um, mountain chimera charged his glade guard. I was really hoping to. Uh, that they would fail their panic test. <laughs> I was really hoping they would, and I could just catch them and at least get some points. But you know, he has pretty good leadership nearby. That wasn't that didn't happen. Now, if you look on the left, my harpies charge the flank of the uh, glade guard, and otherwise I am as you can see me. Uh, so here are my chariots moving over to help out with the combats. Eventually, in the middle, there I'm just really hoping to get lucky. I know he'll be steadfast. He may not even lose combat, but if he does lose, he'll be steadfast, and I'm hoping that just, that's enough. Um, yeah, just to make it fit, I'm kind of pulled out a little bit, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have a magic phase, and all he has to do is dispel that. And here are the gores who are too lazy to get into that fight. So that's really not a good matchup. The Gorgon's great against uh, infantry troops, but not against monstrous infantry. So during magic phase, he dispels my Mount Chimera, so uh, I now have no magic. Uh, over here, yeah, I think uh, we, we did a wound apiece. I had a charge and a flank. He, he had a, um, a banner. Anyway, I win. He was steadfast. He stuck. Uh, he wasn't able to reform, though, so at least the Harpies have a small chance of sticking around for a while. Uh, here on the right, I couldn't believe it. This Scorgon did a single wound to the Treekin. Just absolutely abysmal. One wound to them, they did two wounds to me, they win combat, I'm stubborn 10, and I lose my frenzy. So we go to warrior to Wood Elves, turn 4. Um, the board is roughly that, as you can see it. Yeah, so he's moving his Glade Guard just to, here on the left-hand side to shoot at uh, one of my chariots. Uh, his Treekin comes into this horde. This is going to be tough. I'm basically, I'm wounding on sixes, so he's going to do a lot of wounds to me. I'm going to be steadfast, re-rollable for a long time, uh, just hoping to get some wounds off of him, or hoping that he fluffs enough attacks that I actually win combat, and then get insanely lucky that he fails his um, break test. So, other views of the board. Uh, here he reformed his Glade Guard to try to get his um, his Treekin uh, some room to get around there. And this is a kind of a mistake I see a lot of people make, but a lot of times when they attach characters to units, they just put them next to the unit and don't count it as a rank, so um, it's probably a small thing. He should have an extra Glade Guard in the back and his Spellcaster in the front rank of five, or have it all six ranked, six wide, but whatever. So he gets uh, Dwellers Below off. Remember my plus one strength banners in this unit, so instead of strength four, there's strength five, so I only lose three rank and file models but my general rolls a six and so my general dies which is why I said it doesn't matter he was outfitted for combat and it doesn't matter what he had because he never got to combat so I felt that was um, fairly fortunate with the best of gores and kind of unfortunate losing the general uh, then he shoots at me and is really starting to beat this unit up uh, shoots the chariot kills that and he kills a bunch of my gore I don't think I do any wounds to him yeah, I'm steadfast and I stick. Um, with the Glade Guard and Harpies, I think I kill another one. Uh, and he, whatever happened to the combat result, he's able to reform, so it looks as you can see it. And this is not going well for the Gorgon. So this time I think I did at least three, maybe four wounds to them, but he did three wounds to me. So my Gorgon's sitting on one wound left, uh, which is not great. So we go to Beastman turn 4. On the right-hand side, my Gorf make the charge this time to help out with the Treekin. So the good news is my Gorgon only has one wound left, so all the attacks that go against him, the most he's going to get is one wound, and there's not too many Treekin that can attack my Gore. So I'm hoping that the charge is standard and two, if not three, ranks. I'll beat him through combat res and push them off the board. And if I don't do that, I don't think I'm ever going to beat that unit. Uh, my uh, Bestigor charge 
his uh, dryads in the woods. And a chariot on the upper left charges the rear of the glade guard that the harpies were holding up. So it looks like that. I'm thinking the chariot should help win that combat. And then I'm thinking I'm just going to reform him and maybe bring him into the tree can to see if, to the treeman to see if I can get a lucky wound or two and a charge in the rear and all that. But yeah, who knows? More angles. And this was crazy. So the big news was his uh, his treeman did very very few wounds to me. I did. I think I did a wound or two to him, but I had a standard and a couple ranks. I actually won combat, and he failed his break test, and then I ran him down. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's that's not good for the Wood Elves. The uh, Bestigor beat up on the unit of Dryads. There's still two left. Uh, the um, Between the, the Harpies and the Chariot, they did a lot of damage to the Wood Elves. Uh, you notice there's still two Harpies left, so the Wood Elves, the Glade Guard, just really didn't do much in combat. Um, so they'll go off the board next turn, and so it feels like I'm finally kind of getting him, you know, pinned in in that corner. The problem is he's got a level 4 with Lore of Life, and I don't have any kind of defense. Uh, over here it worked. He just he just really fluffed his attacks on my guys. He, he, he did fine against the Gorgon, but it only took one wound, and he was dead. He did, I think, only one wound to this unit, maybe two, and uh, anyway, I won. He failed his his leadership test and ran off the table. In hindsight, I should have pursued off the table. It would have protected this unit from shooting, and I'm too far away to charge next turn anyway. But anyway, I just reformed. And we go to Wood Elves, turn five. He he uh, takes his Branch Wraith and kind of moves him to safety, uh, sets up his, gla his uh, Dryads to kind of form a wall to try to keep my guys away from his uh, fragile troops. Look at his Treekin at the top right. I mean, they're just stuck behind his general's unit. Just <laughs> this awesome combat unit that really just can't get out and help anywhere. Uh, for the third time of the game, he gets Dwellers Below off and uh, just annihilates this unit. Just, yeah. Uh, does some shooting in my chariot, and uh, it's down to a single wound left. Uh, shoots at this unit, and... There's four guys left. And after combat, the uh, Bestigor killed the last of the Dryads with whom they were in combat and um, reform because it's his turn. So I figure on my turn, uh, I can charge him in the flank. And I didn't, didn't see a need to be any more than five wide at this point. And Beast in turn five, it looks as you can see it. I'm kind of hoping that the four remaining Gore will take the shooting and and uh, so my Senegor will be free to uh, help charge next time. And if nothing else, I think they can, if I get them and the Gore into his Glade Guard, I can get a couple of my Senegor attacking his level four and maybe kill kill her and at least net a lot of points that way. I take my Bestigor and a Chariot into the Dryads. I figured it was worth the Chariot risking the dangerous strain test. It only has one wound left, but the impact hits alone will, will be nice. I didn't want to take the remaining uh, Gore Horde. One, they were they were spread out wide with only like one and a half ranks deep. So I just reformed him. But if I took them into the front of the Dryads, he was just going to do a lot of wounds to me. Uh, after combat, it looks like that. The Chariot died. Uh, the Dryads broke. I didn't want to pursue him. I, I wanted to reform so I could um, so I could uh, charge the, his other units. I figured on his turn, those guys may not rally. And if they do rally, uh, so what? I mean, get, get some points elsewhere. So Wood Elves turn six. Again, his tree kinder behind his lines, not able to do it a whole lot. He takes his branch wraith up to uh, to block my bestigors. Going to sacrifice that. And during shooting, he kills the the, the last four of the gore, which frees my senegor up. So I charge the senegor. He does stand and shoot, kills two of them. Then my gore go into his unit. Um, my bestigor and the remainder of the horde go into his branch wraith. Um, you know, anyway, it is as you can see. His dryads did not rally. They ran off the board. And then, I mean, all hell broke loose, loose here. When we killed the Branch Wraith, um, my Senegor did kill the Spellweaver. My Gore killed every Glade Guard to a man. He, I, I couldn't believe it. They they opened up the biggest can. I mean, that's how I remember it. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they just killed him. I didn't break him. Uh, he had a, a, that small unit of Glade Guard failed its panic test and ran off the board. And so... Uh, he really has very, very little left on the table at this point. Those Treekin have been pretty much worthless, and then some Glade Guard far, far away. So it ended up being a victory for the Beastmen. Pretty brutal game. Um, 
you know, the dwellers below going off three times just tore me up. And the shooting, you know, kudos to anybody willing to take Wood Elves um, right now with their current book in 8th edition. Uh, I think they can win. I think, you know, a lot of things went my way this game. Um, so I'm not saying they can't win by any means. But it's certainly a fun game between the Beastmen and the Wood Elves. Hope you enjoyed it.